Steve Norris, thanks for joining us here at Base London. We've heard a lot about the challenges that London faces as it grows. Mm. 11 million population we could have in, in the next couple of decades. Yeah. Can we cope? Are we doing the right things? Well, I don't think we can cope if we go on as we are. I mean, I, I'm one of those people who thinks that if... Uh, well, you know, give me a, a classic example. Since I first stood for mayor in 2000, a million more people are in the city already. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're talking about, you know, uh, 10 million by 2030. I think it's mm. more likely by 2025. So are we, are we coping? No, I, I, th I think the answer to your question is not yet. Do we understand that there's a problem? Yes. I think, mm. I think you know, the current mayor and, well, crisis, and mayoral crisis was. Yeah. It, it, crisis is not an inappropriate word right. when you think of the pressures that, that this kind of, these numbers mm -hmm. are, are visiting on London. Mm. Um, I think it's, it's good to see that these days the candidates who are running for mayor and, and uh, you know, to a lesser degree the current mayor actually do understand that the urgency, mm. and the urgency yeah. is not just about housing. Mm. The urgency but, yeah. is about, you know, transport infrastructure, mm. about schools. But and housing, about housing and seems so to be on. the top of the list and we well, do seem to be good struggling start. we know the numbers we need to achieve yeah. and we're not achieving them i mean is that simply because the wrong model's there well i think the wrong model is there i mean but the model is capable of being changed i mean one of the issues around london is it's a very low-rise city yeah. actually um, you know, you've got clusters in places like, well, you know, obviously Canary Wharf in the city. Mm. Uh, these days, maybe a few in Croydon. You've got a cluster now these days in Vauxhall Nine Elms. Mm. Um, but when you look at the rest of the city, it's remarkably low rise. Mm. Um, we're not, we should be looking not just at uh, brownfield land. Um, we should not just be looking at places like Old Oak Common, where mm. you've got the potential for you know mm. 24,000 homes and incidentally 50 to 60,000 jobs. But you should also be looking at a local authority with a high street, for example, where classically we've got, you know, shop plus two floors plus mansard. Mm. You go to Europe, your classic high street yeah. is shop plus four stories yeah, plus yeah. mansard, and the local authority should be saying, and in my view, the mayor should be saying, this mm. is what I want in the London plan, mm. not. You can't have a four-story plus mansard building because it's out of kilter right, yeah. with the rest of the high street. You should mm. be saying, you can have the consent and everybody else is going to yeah. build to that height. Mm. You know, if we added one story to every building in London, we'd solve the housing crisis. Well, Think of that. Well, there you heard it here first. The, the thing we are doing in London, though, is uh, bringing together a more of a holistic approach to infrastructure by bringing yeah. in transport alongside energy, yeah, alongside right. housing, alongside the business. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that's a success story, is it? I think it's more of a success. I mean, we're beginning to recognise that it isn't just housing. That's why, funny yeah. enough, I was going to, you know, I was sort of uh, picking up on on, mm. on what you were saying about whether we're prepared. I mean, it's 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 housing, but it's the kind of infrastructure mm. that is transportation, healthcare, policing, mm. often neglected. But mm. you know, we have to essentially control how 11 people coexist. Yeah. Um, it's about energy, mm. uh, energy generation, energy diffusion. How do you get? you know, energy into the city. Yeah. I mean, I, I was told the other day, I still can't really get my head around this, that the Shard alone uses as much electricity as the city of Chelmsford. Right. Well, if that's true, all I can say <laughs> is a lot of very careful people in Chelmsford. But I mean, it's an astonishing proposition. Yeah. And yet, are we doing enough about making sure that this mm. city can be energy efficient? Yeah. No, we're not. Mm. So I think we, we need a much more holistic approach. And frankly, we need a much more aggressive and yeah. brave approach. Big issues uh, or big, big challenges around making the, uh, the transport system work. But of course, we've heard recently that you know, the problems that Network Rail has been uh, under, or is under in delivering. Um, do you fear, does that, does that raise alarm bells about the scale of the challenge we've got in, in London, particularly with Crossrail, Crossworld 2, High Speed 2? No, yeah. I, not at all. I mean, I think you know, what, we, what we've got to do, however, is we've got to make a case to central London, which says, look at what is happening with Crossrail 1. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll guarantee you, because I had the experience of taking on the Jubilee Line extension, and I saw how that was full on day one, yeah. how if I get on the Jubilee Line at London Bridge now, not just at nine in the morning or five in the evening, but just right now, Midday, you know, it's mm. about midday. You and I are having this conversation. It'll be full. Yeah, it's full. This is a line which the treasurer used to tell me nobody would ever use. Yeah, yeah. Crossrail one will be full the day it opens, and that's mm. ten percent extra capacity. So get on with Crossrail two. Mm -hmm. You know, get on with the Thames Tideway Tunnel. Then get your tunnel as building Crossrail two. Bring HS2 in so that it can relieve some of the pressure going up to Manchester and Birmingham. And then think about what else we need. Think about Barking Reach, where we can have enormous expansion in terms of homes, but where it needs transport to oh, yeah. be so, inserted So first. we have the vision. We have the vision. Yeah, have the vision. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and you've got to think imaginatively. You've got to think yeah. about, for example, how these days, this very morning, mm -hmm. 
Um, I didn't have an appointment in my office until 10 o'clock. So what I did was I emptied my inbox at home mm -hmm. so that I could get a seat on the Northern Line when I came into right. the office. Mm -hmm. Now, that kind of flexibility yeah. is not home working, mm -hmm. it's flexible working, right. and it's brilliant. Yeah. And it's the future. So let's anchor more people closer to their homes rather than having literally those millions of people flooding into central London and out yeah. like a great tidal wave. Bigger questions, are, it, will we ever see an estuary airport? No, we won't see an estuary airport, in my view. I think it's the right answer to entirely the wrong question. We'll, I don't know yeah. why Boris continues with it. I but think, we'll, frankly, he's not helping London. But we will have, one, we will have an expansion at Stansted, though, you reckon? I think we'll have an expansion at Gatwick next, mm -hmm. uh, and thereafter I think it'll be Stansted, where already the new regime in, uh, from Manchester Airports Group, who have relied on this wonderful new competition which we've got mm -hmm. for air services in London, they've taken the 17 million passengers a year they inherited. They're already at 22. Mm -hmm. um, when they get to about 38, they're going to be as full as Gatwick is now. Right. They're going to be the next, regardless of what happens, whether it's Gatwick or Heathrow. And of course, the great thing about Stansted is it's got the capacity for four right. runways, so it's going to be number one, number two, number three, and number four. Right. We won't. We will have a new mayor in May. And then it, I'll be dead. Right. Well, so I won't mind well, so much. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> possibly. Mind you, these days I'll be dead before <laughs> HS2 opens. Well, we won't, you, won't be, you won't be dead before the next mayor is elected, no. but it won't be you. No, uh, sadly what, not. Uh, what, uh, what advice could you give them? You're a former mayoral, mayoral candidate, but uh, oh, yeah. you know, what, what, do they, what do they need to do? What's the next mayor need to well, do? Well, I think you know the next mayor has got to pick up these huge challenges. It's not, it's not a job for, for a faint-hearted. Um, it, it, it is about housing London. It's about preparing London for this massive mm -hmm. expansion, which is not incidentally driven by new migration. It's driven by internal yeah. changes in birth rates and death rates. People, mm -hmm. old sods like me, not dying early enough, you know, <laughs> sticking around in the houses. Is yeah. not making them available, not recycling them. But it's about housing, it's about infrastructure, it's about energy, it's about waste and, and the way we treat waste and whether we can create energy out of it. It's about um, you know getting the people without jobs to the jobs without people. And it's actually about something much more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. It's about avoiding the Paris experience where you just have very rich people in the middle mm -hmm. and then slightly richer, slightly less rich, slightly less rich, slightly richer until you get to the extremes where it's just all poor. Yeah. That would be dreadful. London mm -hmm. hasn't been that mm -hmm. way historically. Big aim for the minister, for the mayor rather, is to make sure that it's not yeah. like that in the future. I've got a feeling, Steve, you're going to be uh, on their case making sure that happens. So thanks for joining us. Thanks, it's a real Steve. pleasure. Thank Great. you. Bye-bye.